Today I'm going to take you through creating this slow motion render step by step in Cinema 4D, Arnold Render, and After Effects. This is part one of two focusing on scene setup and animation. All right, let's get started. So uh, to make an image similar to this, uh, the first thing you need is a good reference. Um, I use the bullet racing video from the Slow Mo Guys. It is uh, a pretty good video, but um, the main thing is that you can see that it has kind of that classic slow motion feel. There's a couple classic elements that give it away, and that's the, the camera angle, the wide side shot, and uh, this you know scientific kind of measurement tool in the background of the you know the black and white boxes. Um, each spaced about a foot apart. Uh, the first thing that you notice is that my projects do not start off in the normal way. I've got a uh, just a very light template uh, where I have all my render settings already set at Arnold Render. Um, the output set to 1920 by 1080. Um, and then additionally, I've got some folders that I use. They're just nulls um, that I've duplicated and renamed so that I can keep myself organized. So I went ahead and imported all of uh, the items that I have, uh, and I'll take you through kind of what what it is I imported. The first thing that I have is this cracked glass asset that I made in Houdini, but honestly, a uh, plane would work perfectly fine. I'm not really using it other than that I made it, and that feels good. And then I've got this football element that I got from Turbo Squid. Um, it doesn't, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to imagine that it doesn't have any materials on it um, in case, you know, you get an OBJ or something that wasn't uh, initially used for um, in Cinema 4D. So um, this way uh, you, you'll know how to get the different passes and hook them up. Um, I've also went ahead and put just a very, very easy linear um, rotation and um, translation value animation on the uh, football itself. I always find it pretty useful to have just, if you're not used to, to having the curve view open and you just use the keyframes up here, uh, I always find it really helpful to go ahead and put it open. If not to mess with, but just to have a visual view of what's going on, just to kind of get a little bit better of a layout of the scene. I went ahead and put a just a plane back here, nothing special. Um, for that grid that you saw, and then I, I brought in a uh, another plane that has a bend deformer on it to get that nice cyclorama. All right, so let's set up a camera. First things first, we're going to get in the general area of uh, where we want the camera to be, um, and I'm going to choose a perspective camera through Arnold and look through it. I know that I'm going to want a you know longer focal length camera because um, we want to really compress the space between the football and the background. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and choose a, a, really an 85 and zoom out to kind of match. All right. That looks about right. And then I'm going to label this Ren Cam. Zero, 01 and I'm going to put a protection tag on it because you never want to move your cameras. It's always a pain in the ass to have to undo that. Um, and that's good for now. We'll pop out of that. So now we know where our, where our uh, animation is going to be viewed from. All right, so we can just leave our camera where it is and let's first drop down a poly effects underneath the cracked glass OBJ and have that selected and let's drop down a plane effector just to kind of see what's going on. So immediately you see it kind of raised up and kind of blew out for a bit. Um, and that's just because it comes in with these de default values that you can go ahead and ignore. Um, and if we If we raise the value in the position X, you can see it's kind of doing what we want it to, but it's um, moving everything in the position X based on its normals. 
and the normals on this is pretty messed up because of the way that I imported it. You can remap the normals if you want. You can do a bunch of different stuff, but um, I'm gonna leave it as is because I don't think it's gonna be that big of an issue once we use the fall off. We want to go ahead and use the transform space object. And that way it's moving all of them in the same direction um, because we know which direction we want these to explode out of. Um, and let's go ahead and change the fall off to sphere. Now you can see I'm kind of bending the glass, uh, which is definitely on the right track and it's not blowing up like it was before. Um, we just kind of want to go ahead and fit this the way that it looks best. We can kind of go in the, this view. Just keep toying around with it. We also want it to be um, the fall off not to be clamped. And that way, um, clamping the fall off means that there's gonna be some kind of flat plateau at the top and we don't want that. We want it to continuously fall off. So go past even what we're saying for the effect of uh, not looking like it ever uh, stops with the, um, the gradation. Right, so that looks actually pretty good. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is drop down a random effector. And notice how I didn't have I didn't have this selected, so it's not going to put it in the effectors list. So I needed to go go ahead and do that. And this looks terrible. Um, so I'm just going to deselect that for now. Hide this and change the fall off to sphere, just like our plane effector. Drag that up kind of fit that back in similar to how we did the other one and have the parameter be rotation put some random values in here and you know the the logic is that as the glass gets further away from its resting position it will rotate more. So we actually want to offset this to just be barely skimming what has been lifted off. And we can also use a position um, parameter to just slightly vary a couple of these, 10. This one was really nice, so maybe I'll do a little bit more of that. You can already see it's kind of getting some nice shard looking stuff um, you know this is a little too much but honestly for what we're doing uh, for this kind of render this will suffice fine all right so the last thing to do is to address i just turn those uh view the displays off because they were really annoying um, the last thing to do is to address the animation, which is actually really simple. You just go into the poly effects. Underneath the effectors tab, you'll see a plane and random. That's both of our effectors that we also added into this. Um, we see their strength. So if you turn this down, the plane goes down. If you turn that down, the randomness goes down. So what we can do is, as this football spins, we can ramp these two up but the plane effector actually needs to start at a little bit more than zero. Have this continue. Have that do something like this. All right. So now we can see if we go into our poly effects and hit H, we've got that problem that I was talking about earlier. It starts off ramping, and we, we don't really want that because we're we're looking at a snippet of a larger shot. These things don't start, you know, ramping into uh, full animation. They start off because they're already animating. They, you know, you don't need to ramp into it. So go ahead and change this to linear with this little L bracket looking thing. Um, 
and let's hit play. Now it's definitely looking a lot better. And let's go into our render camera just to see how this, yeah, that looks good. It looks like it, the glass is exploding out now. Um, the, the most important thing to do when you're animating like this is go ahead and change your renderer to software OpenGL. Make sure nothing's kind of being weird in the viewport. And change the output to preview range. And hit render. And this is going to make a preview of just your viewport. And the reason we're doing this is because a lot of times, because it's not playing back at full speed at 23.976 frames per second, or 24 frames per second, or whatever you know um, FPS you are uh, using, because it doesn't do that, we want to render out a quick time that shows the actual speed like it would be uh, once we've rendered it out. Um, the goal is just to get a, a better sense of the timing um, because if the ball is spinning too fast and the glass isn't really spinning at all, or, you know, or not really lifting at all or something like that, then you want to know that now and not after you've spent $15 on the render. Okay guys, that wraps it up for part one. Please like and subscribe. I'm new, so any support helps motivate me to make more content and get better at tutorials. I invite questions, criticisms in the comment section, and I'll answer as best I can and as quickly as I can. Uh, thanks for watching.